well, I think we're in a predicament here. But it's okay, I have a backup. There we go. Hello, welcome back. Unfortunately, it's been a little while since I have done the like, keyboard video. I think the last time I did it was when I covered the Crystal Purples, which was, let me see, the 29th, so about a week ago. Sorry about that. I had a lot of new content to cover when it comes to the engine side, and I promise that the keyboard stuff will be coming around more. University is starting to ramp up, and the stuff that I'm covering, such as this, this, and maybe that, uh, it's a little bit, you know, more time consuming to do keyboard stuff, but I can't use that as an excuse. So, anyway, the reason why I'm not covering the RK71 is because I realized that when I made that poll, I forgot to mention that I'm going to a keyboard meetup on the 18th of September, and, well, uh, I chose to give it away as a sort of giveaway gift, as kind of sort of a celebration for coming back uh, and finally holding a meetup after, what, two years. So, apologies, I cannot mod that RK71, but I do have the second most popular choice on the poll, which was the TM680, which is a budget custom, where depending on you buy it, you can get it for like 60 bucks, which is actually pretty cool. So, I guess we shouldn't waste any time. Let's just open this thing. Comes in a double layer. And we should open it like this. Allow me to sit down. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. So we have a standard cardboard black box, and inside is the manual. It is all in, surprisingly, English. Very nice. And the cool thing about this keyboard is that it not only comes with a knob on the right here, you can see, but also the box contains a USB-C cable, but I'll get used to that. And this is the 65% keyboard with a lot of bells and whistles that surprisingly is not too bad. The only thing that's kind of bad about this keyboard is the fact that it has north facing LEDs. But for those that are probably looking at OEM like budget keycaps or something, it shouldn't be a problem. So here we have the TM680. It not only has hot swap capabilities, but aluminum plate and a knob where you can turn up and down the volume. You can also play and pause. And I don't know whether or not you can reprogram this. I'm pretty sure you can, but I am not technical enough to do that. But not only does it have all those features, but if I can take my USB-C cable here and move my keyboard out of the way, yo, plug this thing in. It is very pretty. So not only does this have an LED ring of its own, even if it's been a little bit weak, but it has that on the sides too, which is pretty cool. And of course, being a hot swap, you can just put in a key switch, and it does have five pin support, by the way. So here is a Zelios V1. If I put this in and just plop it in there, uh, it'll work as it should. So here, the J key is now functional. So the keyboard itself, I personally got it for about like 60, 70 bucks, but I had it shipped over with uh, another shipment. Uh, so I got it off of Taobao, but I think in the US or something, you can buy it for like a hundred. But I still think that for this, if you any if you can find any way to get it under a hundred bucks, it will be much more worth it than when you buy it for a hundred off of some like site, like some site that's saying like they're ex it's their exclusive or something. It's not, it's a pretty common board. And for some reason, when I ordered it, everyone and their mother is just covered on YouTube, so I probably won't even have a successful video because of this. But when it comes to the TM680, I'm probably going to be just saving it and building it when a friend of mine is looking for a keyboard and perhaps like they want a knob and all that. And I can be like, oh, I can mod it and I can probably give you the keyboard or perhaps have you buy it off me for a reduced price. Because all things considered, it's not too bad. I kind of want to test the stabilizers, so. I am going to get a linear key switch out, which will be the box cream, and I will put it on the stabilizers and see how good they are. All right, so let's test out the space bar. Not 
that great, but it's not the worst I've heard. All right, let's try the left shift. It ticks on the right. It has a weird sort of tick noise as if like it's hitting something. I'll figure out what that is later. That is very rattly. Yeah, the stabilizers need a lot of work. So, I guess for any beginner that's trying to look for a kit, when it comes to this keyboard, you may want to understand that this is probably not the best way about going if you are just lucky to put switches inside and use it because the stabilizers are pretty dog water. Uh, and this keyboard has an overall sort of hollow tone to it, so I suppose if you want to take it down, there are screws here, 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 and here. So a total of one, two, oh, there's even an extra one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws that you need to take apart. And the keyboard has a sound signature that's still pretty hollow. If I were to put a keycap on it, you can really tell that it needs a lot of tender love and care. So yeah, unfortunately, looks like this keyboard will have to go through a makeover and I shall give it a, give it a shot. I think if I were to just take this apart because in order to get this played out, you also need to disassemble the outside because if you take a look at it, there are some like internal cutouts in here that require you to move the keyboard in a certain way, but I can't really figure out how to do that. Can you even take this off? Ah, okay. There is, in fact, there is a disconnect between here. There's a seam here. So it definitely means that you should probably be able to take the top cover off, which is interesting to say the least because I don't recall any screws on the bottom of the keyboard, so this will be interesting to take apart. I suppose I will get back to you when I take it apart. Okay, so taking apart the keyboard was a lot easier than I thought it would be. It was literally removing all the screws, and now you just take off the bottom. And as you can see, I forgot to show off the front part where you can actually see a bit of extra underglow. I always love underglow over over key RGB, so that is a very nice touch. And in the back, I am not gonna touch this. The reason being, the there's actually a foam in between the plate and the PCB, which is actually very interesting because I haven't seen that in a pre-built keyboard before, although this is not really a pre-built, I suppose. But when it comes to actual like cutout foam that's actually pretty cool um so actually i don't know what happens if i just okay nothing happens I'm, I'm sure i can just push it out or something but i'll just leave it as is and modify the stabilizers later but as you can see there's a lot a lot a lot of open space down here it is quite <laughs> it is quite hollow and a very light too i can pick it up with like two fingers so I'm gonna remedy this with the tried and true method of not only give, doing the Tempest tape mod on the bottom, because apparently that works, I'm actually very surprised that it does, but I'll be putting shelf liner inside. To any of you that actually don't know what it is, shelf liner is, well, shelf liner. And I will be cutting this out and filling the insides and sort of muting the board a little bit because I would rather have a mute board than a hollow board. You understand what I'm saying? So in order to do this, I'm just gonna be cutting out this, this, and that, making sure not to block out any of the RGB sort of underglow acrylic here. So I'll be filling out this spot, this spot, this spot, and most likely the sides here because they allow a lot, a lot of room to, for noise to just sort of vibrate inside. And considering it's so flimsy, uh, it's gonna need a lot of work. So I hope that I can mod this within a timely manner and get back to you guys with a sort of acceptable sounding sound test because I kind of don't want this board to go to waste because, well, I also sort of want to make sure that I want this keyboard to be properly modified by the time I start modifying it properly for a friend that may be getting into the keyboard scene and needs a taste of what a good keyboard feels like. So yeah, I'll be back again, but just as a reminder, how to take apart this keyboard, you literally just take out the eight screws on the plate 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Just be sure not to like pry it open on one side. Just sort of wiggle it and sort of use the grooves to your advantage. There are grooves on the top of the keyboard. So like here, for example, you can just sort of put a fingernail in there, just kind of edge it out and it'll just come apart. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful and I'll catch you when I am finished modding this thing. All right, hope everyone had a nice Labor Day weekend. I apologize for the massive gap between the parts of the video. I got caught up with a bunch of work and I was also taking the time to modify the keyboard. So first and foremost, we of course have the case. I put the shelf liner inside because I have a massive roll that I still haven't used up ever since I got the S80, which is over here. And that's just to eliminate a lot of the case pain. But the thing that I also decided to try out for the second time, because as you know it, this is actually tape modded from, you know, the Tempest tape mod. I did it again on my TM680. And considering this is pretty much as painter's tape as I'll get, I think that this will be fine. So now the reason why I wanted to show this off is because you want to make sure that these are not uh, blocked off because these are RGB LEDs, same for here. So that's why there's a massive gap here. And also on the right side, same thing as well. Also, apologies for the fan. The fan is to keep me from sweltering because it is so hot in this room. My room is a genuine furnace. Okay, so I want to very carefully put this on. I'm assuming that if I screw everything back together, everything will be fine. So I might as well give it a try. Oh yeah, and for the stabilizers, I did fix them up. They are now Epsi modded and also properly lubed. They were already clipped, which is actually very nice. And I figured that if I were to save a little bit of time by not having to clip anything from plate mount stabilizers, the better it is. So that makes me a bit happy. And the key switches that we're putting inside here are going to be from my TFG Art or Hansung TFG Art, which are the Art Box Reds, because I currently don't have any switches that will negate any, uh, well, interference because of the fact that these things are north facing LEDs, which is the only downside of this keyboard, but I can't really complain considering all its functionality that it offers. So I am going to be screwing everything back and it seems like everything is in good condition. I will make sure that the LEDs still shine through. One part that I did not show off originally is that I forgot to show off the back LED, which is something that I regret because I don't know if it will shine through or not. So here is the back. Yeah, there we go. So it looks like I did a good job. All of the LEDs are still shining through. Also on the side here. So I suppose a build is in order. Now, this is significantly heavier with the tape and the shelf liner, and it will be even more heavier when I put on the keycaps and key switches. And the key switches, as I said before, are the art box reds. And art box reds are basically the exact same thing as box switches, except now they have a steeper incline so that it actually ignores interference, which is actually very, very nice. And I'll show you right now. Um, here is the TFG art, and it has art box reds. So I'll take one out, I'll show up to the camera. If you can see this box red, you can tell that the front and the back match uh, slopes, just like the box cream, versus, say, a standard MX switch like this bamboo green that I have here. You can tell if this thing will focus, you can tell that there's a massive fat front housing, which causes the interference. So the box reds will hopefully solve this problem. And let's get to finishing this build. Got it. All right, cool. All the box reds are in. And now I'm gonna make use of this EPPT white on, or sorry, black on white, R1. It's a really old set, but I think it'll be fine. So we start off with the space bar because this is a GMK thing. 
And away we go. Well, that was quick, I suppose. And I would say that looks pretty good. Let me show it up to the camera real quick. This is EPBT, black on white. And this is a GMK spacebar. I don't know which set it is, but I'd say it looks pretty good. All right, well, I guess a typing test is in order. So let me just plug this in. I don't really know how to uh, change the RGB. So I suppose I'll do that now. FN plus delete. Hey, look at that. FN plus page up, which is this one, will change the side lamp. Oh, it's just singular color? Nope, it can do RGB. All right, we're doing RGB. Let's do a 100 word typing test. One, two, three. Just for the record, by the way, the reason why the stabilizers sound a little weird, like they sound like they're not traveling properly, is because of the fact that the PBT is actually pretty warped. But I'd still say they, you know, they don't rattle. So at the end of the day, mission accomplished. So at the end of the day, this is the TM680. I'd say it sounds pretty good. Uh, the reason why it probably doesn't sound as thock as other people's boards is because I'm using box switches. And also because I didn't modify them, these are stock box reds that are of the art variant. But I'd say uh, perhaps it would change if I were to type without a desk mat or perhaps on wood. I'll show that right now, actually. Keep in mind that the microphone will be different, though. And I'd say that's about it. Yeah, there's not much else to say. Uh, I don't know if the hype for this board has died down over the last few months. I've had this sitting in my inventory for a little while, but uh, I'm kind of happy with this build. Perhaps I'll do something else with it in the future, but otherwise, I hope this was a very fun video, and expect a five minute typing test video to come out of this very soon. Take it easy, I hope everyone had a good weekend, and uh, have a great rest of your autumn, now that we have started now. So yeah. Have a good one, guys. Got it, Tom.